Hey, in this series we have already analyzed the Sukhoi 57 general configuration, the aerodynamic, the propulsion and the systems. Now it's time to dig deeper into the sensors. The Russians divide the sensors into two groups, this SH-121 radio electronic suite and the 101 KS optoelectronic system. In this video we are covering the former and be ready for something surprising. The Suhoi 57 has been provided with one of the most complex and complete radar suites in the world. The system integrator is the Tikomirov NIP Institute, uh, which in 2003 won the competition for the so called MIRES. It actually translates into multifunction integrated uh, electronic system. It consists of three elements the M036 radar built by the NIP itself, the M036 SHIFF built by GRPZ, and finally the L402 ECM suite built by NERTI. The SH121 produces fully correlated tracks that are uh, provided to the IUS, the system that we have already described, links above and below, and those tracks can be used obviously for presentation and analysis by the pilot. The M036 Squirrel is composed by five antennas covering the frontal 270 degrees of the plane. They are controlled by two computers called Solo 2101 built in Russia by GRPZ. The system is unique for a fighter since it can operate in X-band and in L-band with the computers taking care of the sensor integration. The central antenna under the radum in the nose is working in X-band and it is an AISA array composed by 1514 modules. The antenna is tilted upward by 15 degrees, in which is now becoming a, a sort of a standard measure to reduce the RCS of the antenna itself. Two smaller side arrays with 404 elements each are mounted on the side of the cockpit and they're angled downwards by the usual 15 degrees. Altogether, these three antennas cover the frontal 270 degrees. The frontal antenna uses vertical polarization, while the side antenna uses horizontal polarization to reduce the risk of interference. The fusion of the information into a single presentation is handled by the computers, obviously. The antennas seem to be a bit bulkier than an equivalent Western system, but the N036 electronics seems to be actually divided into different black boxes in uh, the frontal section of the plane. This is probably more difficult to maintain, but definitely easier to fit inside the structure. Obviously, the manufacturer is tight-lipped about the performance, but they declare that the main antenna can output up to 11 kilowatts, which is actually respectable. If this configuration wasn't bizarre enough, there are two more radar antennas. They are installed quite unusually on the wing leading edge. These are L-band arrays and contrary to what some Indian sources say, these are part of an active radar. However, they have relatively few modules and they cover quite a large frontal arc. Unfortunately, we know very little about the performances and the features, for example, frequency agilities, how many beams can be used, scanning patterns, and so on. However, it seems only reasonable that the three X-band antennas operate all at the same time, so this makes three beams, plus each one of the L-band arrays has its own beam, so the Sohoi 57 in normal condition should have at least five beams. 
The apparently bizarre choice of installing five antennas operating in two different bands probably make the Suhoi 57 the best equipped aircraft in the world to deal with stealth. In fact, stealth is mostly effective in X-band, which is also the most common band for uh, air-to-air radars. In the L-band, the radar absorbing materials are less effective, 20 to 30 dB is less effective, and while the geometric stealth <laughs> is still reducing the, R the RCS, the small details like the, all those serrated panel, the fillers, uh, between the panels and so on become pretty much irrelevant. They are just too small compared with the wavelength of the L-band to make any difference. In fact, something which is not really well known by many is that in ground-based L-band radar, but also the longer wavelength radars like UHF or VHF, stealth aircraft has always been visible, even at long ranges. Actually, the lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength, the longer is the range against stealth aircraft. L-band radars are usually not installed on, on fighters because they require large antennas and very powerful emitter. And in fact, we see them installed on one of the largest fighters currently in production, with a lot of power generation available. One might be justified to think that this kind of radars make stealth useless, but this is not the case. In fact, the accuracy of a radar is proportional to the frequency and inversely proportional to the wavelength. While an X-band radar has an accuracy of the order of tens of meters even at long range, an L-band or lower frequency radar has accuracies that are measured in kilometers. The track generated by these radars is usually not enough to guide a weapon to the target. Nonetheless, the mere fact that you may have a relatively good location of the stealth aircraft is quite an important tactical advantage. In the comments of the previous videos of this series, there were plenty, plenty of people telling me that the Suhoi 57 would have been shot down by the F-22 even before knowing that the F-22 was there. Well, with the L-band arrays, the Su-57 is probably the least likely fighter in the world that can be surprised by a stealth fighter. It might still happen but not because of the overwhelming technology. It will happen because of clever tactics and an intelligent use of operational surprise. I'm pretty sure the same people will now be telling me that those radars will be blinded by the incredibly and science fiction-like uh, electronic countermeasure of the F-22 or the F-35, which is a perfect segue for the next part. The L-402 electronic intelligence and countermeasure suite is the least known component of the ASH-121. And of course these secrets are the most closely guarded because their effect on the battlefield should we get into a real confrontation could be crucial and could make the difference between winning and losing. Actually having a full knowledge of the electronic signature of the L402 for the opponent is being halfway there in trying to make it useless. 
At the core of the L402, there is another solo computer, version 21.402, designed specifically for the task. The computer communicates with the aircraft arrays. There is a large dedicated array in the tail of the aircraft, but the L402 is also using the radar arrays. So when the radar is not in use, the L402 is using the arrays to monitor the external environment. I suspect there is some sort of multiplexing mechanism to share the arrays between the two systems. With the AESA arrays, it's probably possible to switch very quickly from the radar mode to the listening mode and vice versa. What we don't know and what, what is not clear is where actually the track correlation is going to happen, either directly in the L402 or is passed upward to the SH121 or potentially even directly to the IUS. What we know though is that the operating mode is largely automatic. The L402 analyzes the threats, prioritizes them and eventually starts jamming them. I was unable to find if the jamming antennas, jamming devices are uh, the usual arrays that in the tail and the five radar arrays or there are some dedicated antennas which may seem likely but as I said I didn't find any particular reference about that. The N036SHIFF identification friend door 4 actually uses two separate antennas dedicated for the function installed in the LevCons. This is a development of the system that was used in the Suhoi 35 and it has the advantage of freeing the radar of doing the IFF task and the system can also be slave to the electro-optical systems so if the aircraft is staying passive the IFF interrogation before firing can happen anyway. The flip side of the coin is obviously is that the system is quite large, bulky and heavy and it is practical only on large aircraft. One of the traditional problems of integrating Russian hardware into a Western environment was exactly the IFF, or better, the IFF compatibility. However, since this has already happened in three, four cases by now, we may expect that it's not going to be a big problem anymore. So there you have it, these are the electronic sensors on the Suhoi 57, the only aircraft in the world that has five radars, antennas and maybe six in two different bands. As a final comment, it may be worth noting that these are not the kind of solutions that you're going to find in the West and that in general Russian electronics tend to be heavier and bulkier than the Western counterparts, but this doesn't necessarily mean that they're working less effectively. As usual, I hope that presenting the fact that a different world is possible is just making you think. So, if you like this video, I'm sure you will love the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. If you could support the channel by becoming a member on Subscribestar, on Patreon, you will have my gratitude forever. In the meanwhile, thank you very, very much for watching and see you next time.